everybody. Uh, I'm going to use this image of a banana on my kitchen table as an example of keyframe animation. Keyframe animation is where you have certain markers on a timeline and Photoshop or whatever software you're working with is going to be connecting the dots and uh, kind of filling in between these keyframes. In order to activate um, any of the animation tools or video tools in Photoshop, you want to go to Window Timeline. And we, right now we want to create a video timeline. There's also the option for a frame animation, and I'm going to do a demo on that as well. But right now we're going to create a video timeline. And what you see here is um, little mountains, little mountains, big mountains. This is a zoom, kind of zooming into your uh, your timeline. And I'm going to make it so it kind of fills fills the small screen. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone for now, and I'm going to start working on the banana. Um, I want to cut this banana out. I'm not going to do, uh, you know, perfect selections and masking. I'm just going to pull that banana out quickly. I want to, uh, if you see, uh, you notice I'm using the quick selection tool, and I am. I'm going to get the shadow as well. I want that little piece there. Uh, almost. Uh, and I got too much. Okay, I'm gonna be a little fussy here. Zoom in a bit. Subtract some of that selection. Decreasing size with my brackets. No, it's not perfect. But okay. A little more there. That's decent. And I'm just going to use a simple cut and paste. So Command X, Command V. Now with Auto Select on, using my Move tool, you know my banana is now on its own layer, disconnected from the background. And I'm going to call this Table. I'm going to call this layer Banana. Now, this is something I covered briefly in class on Tuesday. Um, I'm going to use Photoshop to auto-fill this. I'm using the lasso tool here. And I'm going to just circle my selection. Edit, fill. Content aware. We'll see how well it does. Ooh, what happened? I messed up. Ah, I was on the banana layer. <laughs> Foolish mistake. So I'm going to Command Option Z to step backwards. I'm going to go back to my table layer. Sorry about that. Go to Edit, Fill, content aware. So you could also do a pattern or foreground, background, any color, but I want to use Photoshop. It's going to try to create this wood grain. And you will see, yeah, not amazing, uh, but it's going to work for now. I'm going to bring the banana back into that region. And now we're going to start keyframing. So Looking in the timeline, I want to open up the banana layer, and I want you to notice what's happening here. There are three stopwatches, one for position, one for opacity, one for style. I'm going to start with position stopwatch, and I'm going to create a keyframe by hitting that watch. And so what, that's, what that is telling the software is that at the beginning of the animation, or the video timeline, the banana will be here. I'm going to drag the time slider all the way to the end of the animation. I'm going to place it somewhere else. And that is going to tell the software, OK, this is where it should be at the end. So I'm actually going to drag it all the way out. Oh, whoops, no. <laughs> I, almost, I almost dragged into my other uh, animation demo. OK, so I'm going to leave it here. And you can see that another keyframe was created. 
automatically. So anytime, so if I'm in the position, if I have position keyframe activated and I move the position, it's going to give me a keyframe. And then when I move in between, that's what's happening. So I can hit the play button to see that as well. And there my banana goes. Amazing. Okay, and I could do other things as well. So you can see that the position, um, I'm going to get rid of these for now. I'm going to go back to, to kind of zero. I'm going to start again and just show you another example. So let's say I wanted to do something very odd, like the banana goes this way first, and then it goes this way. You see how it's, the software is giving us the keyframes right there? Um, and then it goes that way. So the, the routine is, or the workflow is that you move this, the timeline and then you move the position of the object. Okay, so now we're going to end up with this very uh, strange zigzagging banana. For some reason, I didn't end up with a keyframe at the end. It doesn't really matter that much. There we go. Um, if you're wondering what we can do here, opacity. Um, the opacity is going to start at 100% here. And then if I drag it to the end, um, and I bring my opacity down to, let's say, 0, what will happen over the animation is that the... Uh, Banana is slowly going to fade away. The ghost banana. And then with style, uh, it's not something we've talked about in Photoshop, but um, I'm going to create a keyframe with no styles. And then I'm going to do the same thing where it kind of fades. So I'm going to use layer styles, which is this FX key in the layers panel. Um, add a layer style. I'm not sure which one to use. Let's just add a stroke. So I'm going to add a pretty thick stroke, a 15-point stroke. It's going to be yellow, like a banana. And uh, maybe I'm going to make that stroke uh, disappear. So you can see the stroke is getting thinner and thinner as it fades away. I have no idea why you'd want to use this. Um, I oh no, though I do know why you would want to use a style, uh, you know, keyframe, but maybe not a fading stroke on a banana. But anyway, I'm gonna get rid of that one. Um, there are things you can do to um, to make things a little bit more interesting. I'm actually gonna go back. And I'm going to reopen this file. I think it would be helpful if you do the same thing. And I'm going to create a video timeline again. And I'm going to show you a slight variation here. Um, something that we haven't talked about a lot, except when some of you have dragged images into Photoshop, and they automatically become smart objects, which is a little bit like a vector package for, for an image. Um, anyway, in this case, I want us to uh, I want us to actually make our image, our layer, a smart object. Oh shoot, I move I moved I should not have reopened this file um, because now I have to remove the banana again. So don't listen to me when you're doing this with me here. I'm just gonna do a very mediocre uh, Example here. Edit cut, command V to paste. Very quick here. I'll lasso it again. 
see if Photoshop does any better job on the wood texture this time. It should be probably exactly the same. Content aware fill. I just used a shortcut, which is shift delete to get to fill, but you can go up to edit fill. Let's see. About the same. Get a deselect command D to deselect. Bring the banana back. Okay, now I want to convert the banana layer to be a smart object. So what I'm going to do is right click or control click, which is like the same as the right click. I'd right click if you're in the lab. Go down to convert to smart object. And you're going to get this little symbol. <clears throat> and what converting to a smart object is going to allow us to do so not only change the position, but to be able to transform the banana. So it's going to allow us for some more sophistication in this very unsophisticated animation. So, but I think it'll be, yeah, it'll be much better um, because we can do things like this. Um, let me, I want to see the end of the timeline. Okay, so I'm starting the keyframe in the transform menu, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to move it like about halfway. And I'm going to move the banana. I'm going to use Command T or Edit Free Transform, but I like using Command T. And I'm going to rotate the banana a little bit. And I'm going to shrink it a little bit. And I'm going to put it right there. Enter. Okay, so you can see if you drag the slider back, it's a little bit more interesting. So now it's turning to the side. Slowing, slowly going back, and then I'm going to send it back even farther. So I'm going to send it all the way to the top. I'm going to shrink it down quite a bit. A little banana. A little banana. And I'm going to uh, turn it more. So now I'm going to... Oh no, I'm going to run out of power. <laughs> okay, so I have to hustle through this. Um, almost at the end here. So let's see what happens. There it goes. It's turning. It's shrinking. It's heading off down the desk. It looks like it bumps off the side like a pinball. And it is heading, heading out into the horizon. Farewell, dear banana. I don't like the location of that center piece. I can I can drag around keyframes, and so now it's going to take a little bit longer. Or maybe I wanted to skip really quickly to that first keyframe. Let's see what that would look like. It's going to fly over there and then slow down. Maybe I want to add another one. There's some humor here. It's going to turn on its side. Going to shrink a little bit. Whoa, okay, so <laughs> the basics of keyframe animation in Photoshop with a banana on a kitchen table. end it.